Hey, it's Christy. Welcome to my little studio here in Maui. And I have something really fun that I'd like to share with you today. And that is making a dragon together. Just a wee little dragon out of polymer clay and some powders. I'll tell you all about what you need in a minute. But I just want us to get into kind of a fantasy spot in our heads. Imagine the world with dragons in it. And let's go make one. Does that sound like fun? I know, right? Me too. All right, let's go. Come on. Here's what you're going to use. Some polymer clay. Now this can be any color that your dragon wants to be. I just mixed up a little white with some gray granite and some turquoise granite. I use Primo. That's my brand of choice. I love that brand. All polymer clays will work, but Primo is an excellent sculpting clay. So I've just mixed that up into a nice little blended mix. Again, anything you want. Then I'm going to use a little black glass eyeball. So since this has to get baked in the oven, polymer clay is not an air dry clay. It has to be cured in the oven. So we're going to use something that can go in the oven for the eye. I suggest a little glass bead, either stone or uh, crystal or glass bead, or you could use uh, a, a glass rhinestone, or in this case, I've got a little glass, uh, it's like a teddy bear type eye where it's just glass on a little wire bit there. All right. Um, then you're going to have a little bit of powder. Now my powders are a little bit messy because I'm using them all the time, but these are called pan pastels. They are a type of chalk or pigment powder that is just beautiful to work with, but any kind of powder that has color to it can work great. That'll go in the oven, no problem. You'll need a paintbrush to apply that. And then just a nice little assortment of your um, kind of sculpting tools. Cutting blade cuts your polymer clay. Tweezers can help place things. And then, of course, I have three very lovely sculpting tools. There'll be a description, uh, I'm sorry, a link in the description so you can go right to my site to get those. And needle tools are handy. This is a, just a, a metal knitting needle. Anything like that that you have to sculpt with is going to be groovy. And finally, I work on a, just a little tile. You can get these at the hardware stores. Um, it's just a little glazed tile. You don't have to have that, but it's a nice surface to work on. And then, all right, you've gathered your stuff. Let's get making. Making a dragon is really easy the way that I do it because I am not really kind of bothering too much with all the legs and stuff. Basically, I have a dragony head and a kind of curled up body and some wings. And that is enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I have mixed up some clay. And it can be any color you like, as we talked about already. Um, but I've mixed some of this up. And I'm going to take some and set it aside for things like wings. And the rest I am just going to roll into a ball. This allows me to make sure the clay is soft and ready to use. It also gives me a chance to look and see if there's any weird stray particles that need to be pulled out of there uh, before we get started. So I'm going to say we want to start with a ball. Let's make it just a tiny bit smaller, about thus bigly. The size of a chocolate truffle. Now I'm going to take this end, I'm going to roll this in my hands to start making a teardrop. So see what I've done is I've put that ball in my hands and I've kind of wedged my hand so that I'm pressing a little harder on one side than the other. You may have a better way of doing it. This seems to work for me. What I want is I want to have a nice tapered teardrop. This will obviously become the tail end and the head's going to be up here, but it's important that this teardrop is kind of fat. The reason is this is going to be both the body and the head. And if it's too skinny in here, he's going to look like a very starving little dragon. And as we all know, dragons like to fly around and eat chocolate that's been unattended. And so they get kind of fat and chubby. So let's keep some, some uh, girth in here. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the head from the body by giving this a little squeeze. Now you notice how I'm squeezing it? I'm not doing this because then I just get this weird flat thing like somebody rolled over his neck. That's not so good. I'm pushing it together, but I'm going to have to keep moving my hand so it gets pushed all around. And you see how I've got some blob on the other side of my pushing. So you're squeezing him to pop a head out is basically what you're doing. This is sort of your proportion. Now I've made 657,000 dragons over the years. So I'm going to guess my uh, proportions pretty quickly and easily. 
Yours may not do that the first time. And here's the thing I want you to remember, everybody, about creativity. Making a mess and screwing up is part of it. If you don't ruin things, sometimes you're not doing it right because you'll never discover new and interesting things if you don't sneak out of your comfort zone and try stuff. Or if you don't mess up, then you know what to do the next time. And sometimes you mess up multiple times in a row. It's all good. Don't worry. It's all part of the process. So I'm going to squeeze this around. And I also like to get my fingers, once that's squeezed in there, and kind of roll back and forth. And what that does is sort of smooths that neck a little bit. Now, you may notice that there's a lot of fingerprints on this dragon. That's okay. I love the look of fingerprints on sculpture. I think it looks great. It shows that your presence has been there, imbuing your beautiful soul into this little crazy thing you're making. And it also just is kind of a fun little texture. So don't worry about fingerprints. If that sickens you, then you can smooth those all off later by just rubbing them. And there's other tricks that you can use too, but rubbing will get most of those away. If you need to, you can. All right, so now what I've got is I've got a nice, fat, chocolate-filled body, a bit of a stubby tail, we'll deal with that later, and a knobby area that shall become a head. If this is giant and bulbous, then he is going to be very top-heavy and going to fall down a lot when he flies. So you're going to want to just pinch some of that off, just nip that right off. If it's too skinny, you might have to put a little bit more to get a little bit better head, but this should be your proportion. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine what is this guy going to do? I My guy is going to actually curl with his tail coming around and head looking off in this different direction. So I'm going to start curling him a little bit. Now it helps that I know what I'm doing with this. You're not quite sure where I'm going with this yet. So you're just going to have to trust me and then try it. And then if you want to do something else, of course you can. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and pinch this head portion to start making it look less like a blob and more like a little dragon. So you notice what I'm doing is I'm pushing it down here with my finger and that's creating a higher forehead and squeezing it a bit. This will make a cuter dragon. And so this nice big bulbous head there makes it kind of cuter. So now I'm just going to pull this out as long as you want. It can be a very long snouted dragon or a short variety, whatever makes you happy. And now look, see, I've done this. I've just pinched. So my thumb goes up underneath his chin and I'm pushing down in his nose. And doesn't that make it look like a dragon just by doing that? How fun is that, right? All right, let's play with the other end now. That's good for now. Let's take this tail and let's start tapering it. Now, the way I do that is I just start touching it so that the clay is nice and warm. And as I touch, I sort of twist and pull. And I'm just letting my fingers kind of slide down the clay, not putting too much pressure. You're not trying to yank the tail off. If you do yank the tail off, it's okay. It won't be the first time a dragon has had his tail yanked off. But since they're closely related to lizards, they can regenerate a new tail. Just put a little clay on there and you should be fine. All right, so now this is what we've got. Let's take a look at that. All right, what do you think so far? Yep, me too. I think we're looking pretty good. Now, this particular dragon can be a pendant or it can be part of a wall piece. There's a lot of stuff that I do with these things, and I used to make a lot of these as little pendants to wear, but lately I've been doing a lot more wall pieces. So I'm going to show you how to create a hole in it, if you're going to wear it as a pendant and, of course, talk to you about how to put a, you know, a pin back on it if you want to. But I'm going to press this a little flatter here. I don't want it to look squished. I just want it to be a little bit flatter because I'm going to have to add some wings on there. And if it's too big and round, they don't really work as well. All right. Now, if you choose to put your dragon's, uh, pull your dragon's neck to make it longer, that's great. But if you don't, that's also fine. I'm going to tuck them around a little bit more because I'm going to want this tail to kind of curl up and around. And there's a reason why I do that, and that's mostly so you don't have to see that I just left off all of his feet because I didn't really feel like doing them. So that's kind of how we're going to look like with that, and then the wings are going to come up here. I just made this curl and kind of tip off like that. You can get crazy with that tail. You can make it do whatever you like. But now we need to make his face look more like a face. So I'm going to go to my handy dandy tools. This is my can't live without it tool. And I'm going to use this to sort of poke 
a little hole where I think the eye should go. The reason I do that is I get to, uh, to look at it and decide if I like that. Because if I don't, I can clean that up by putting a little bit more clay in there, smooth it up, and make a different hole if I like. That, to me, is usually a pretty good placement. Now I've got that little glass eye, and if you have just a bead or a crystal, you can just press that straight in to that area, and I'm pushing it down in so that it embeds about halfway in. All right, so now I've got that cute little face here. I'm just smoothing a little bit of a notch that I got by not paying attention to where my tool was, I'm using my finger and more fingerprints to take care of that. Now, if you want to make him have a little cute smile, because, you know, sometimes dragons do. This is the tool I like to use, and this is, um, again, that can't live without a tool. And I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to press a little line here. So see how I'm kind of pressing that in? And then I'm making it come up just a little bit. And if you want him to be happy, you can make him upturn that just ever so slightly, and he's got a cute little grin. You don't have to, though. A, a dragons look really wonderful if they're enigmatic and you don't quite know what they're thinking. This tool, this is another one of my favorites, is called the Wow It's Awesome. But you could also use a small ball tipped tool or embossing tool for this. Or again, your little uh, metal knitting needle. And I'm going to press a little nostril in by just pressing it right there. And it makes his nice little nose. Now you notice what I'm doing here is I'm just making the profile. I am not trying to make this on both sides. It's not completely three-dimensional. This is an easy breezy profile dragon. All right, so far so good. So now you want to tuck his head in a little bit more. You can. That's always kind of a cute look. And then I'm going to get ready to put his ear in right there where the dragon's ear will go. So starting off with a little ball of clay. That's going to be a little bit big. That'll be a bit more of a donkey dragon than we want. So I'm going to roll this into a ball and then turn it into a bit of a teardrop. So again, there's our proportion. Now I'm going to press this just a little, not a whole bunch, but just a little to make sure that um, it's flat enough for the next step. And I'm going to make sure that that end is nice and pinchy. So I'm going to grab yet another tool. Now you can make do with whatever tools you have. I'm just using tools that over the years I have found work the best. This is the Gotta Have It tool from my collection. I love it because it's got this wedged curve edge and look at how wonderfully that creates an impression to make my dragon's ear. And then if I take the edge of it and I just press another little line or two, see how that makes a very, very convincing dragon's ear. A little pinch and it's good to go. Now, I can just press this on, but look at how much extra clay there is there. That's just way too much clay. So I'm going to take my um, cutting blade, and I'm going to just slice off that extra right there so that I can just lay that right in the ear area. So now that's a big dragon ear. I am totally groovy with that, but you could definitely make it smaller if you want. So I'm going to press it in here to make that make the connection a little bit better. Then I'm just going to take my tool and you could use anything and you could even use a toothpick for this part and just smooth that edge to make it look like it is growing out of the dragon and not like the dragon ear fairy just came by and plopped it on his head. All right, so there's this cute little dragon ear. I usually like to put another ear shape on the back side. I do this just to make sure, because you would normally would see it, make sure there's that continuity, but I'm not going to give it any details. I'm just going to press out a little bit of that teardrop shape, and I'm going to figure out where it would be back here, so I can just press that in place. And you can blend it in if you want to, but if you do, be careful not to squish anything on the front, okay? Hold it very gently. If you just press it, that's also enough already. All right, so there we have a good look for our dragon, don't you think? So now all we really need to do is add the wings and then the rest will just be powder or as much embellishment as you want and we'll talk about that. I'm not gonna do that to this one, but I'm gonna tell you what you can do. All right, for wings. Now I'm gonna do something simple for wings. First of all though, I'm gonna get my fingers in here and I'm gonna pinch right where those wings are gonna go. So that's on the right past his neck, right on the top of his back. That way it flattens the area where the wings are supposed to be. Makes it just kind of stick on easier and, and work a little bit better. 
At least I think so. So I'm going to roll out two little balls here. And these are actually a little bigger than I need. Here we go. So those should be about the same size. And I'm going to turn those into sort of long... What would that be? It's sort of like halfway between an egg and a snake. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to press it out a little bit so it's flatter. And I'm going to curve it a little bit like this. And I'm going to do the same to this one. Now what's going to happen is I'm only going to put details on the front wing. But I am going to put the back wing so that we can make a pendant out of it. And it also gives it some proportion. So I'm going to press this one back here and then press this one on top of it. Now you don't need to see that other one back there. It is mostly to open up a space where we're going to put a hole for hanging this as a pendant and just to give it a little support. Now you notice how I've got those wings that are going back like this. That's because if I hang it, it's gonna be like this with the head down. If you prefer the head up a bit more, then you would just push your wings a little higher like this and he would sit this way. So that's up to you. In fact, now that I pushed them there, I like that. I like to make my dragon with more of a bird wing thing going on as opposed to a bat wing. Why? Eh, nobody knows. Just more fun for me. So it's artistic choice as opposed to accuracy or whatnot. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going to make some feathery bits. So they're just a roll, a ball, rolled into a ball, rolled into an oval, flattened out. Not really an oval. It's that same weird teardroppy funky shape. And I'm just going to lay them down, coming down the body like a, a, a wing, regular wing would do. And they're going to get little bit by little bit smaller and smaller as we go. That one's a little smaller than it needs to be. So I'm kind of tapering it down, you know, making it um, get slightly smaller. If you're not sure how that looks, you can go outside, ask a bird to come and pose for you, which sometimes is helpful. Or you can Google it or look at it in the library book or something and kind of look how wings go. I'm not being entirely accurate so far as how wings go, but I'm trying to take my cues from reality anyway. Then I can ignore as much of the reality as I prefer. So you see what I'm doing? And I usually end up getting about five on there. That usually works. Okay, last one here. Boop, boop, boop. And see how I'm pressing it down? That's why it was important to get this down closer to the surface of the tile so it wouldn't be floating up in the air too much. All right, so you don't want to leave it all crazy and weird over here. So now all I'm going to do is just make another series of smaller feathers to go on that spot covering it up. So same shape, but I'm going to curve them a little bit so I can put them along here and have them run down and cover that. So the piece that we put on before was just sort of like a form that we're covering. It gave us a pattern to follow or a base to follow and make, makes it easier to put these, le these wings on properly. So now you notice I haven't done as many, which you can if you want. And I'm also curving them a bit, so they're like transitioning. If you have some going this way and some going that way, it looks like he got caught in a storm, which, you know, if that's the look you're going for, okay. But I would suggest that you kind of make it look like it all belongs on the same creature. And then I'm going to just put one little bit more one right there. Now, the rest is up to you. You'll notice that there's a lot of stuff going on here that's not entirely finished looking. I often will just put another little layer or smaller ones, anything to make that transition look smooth. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm making yet smaller ones and I'm going to go just right along that edge. So it kind of finishes that up. This also gives a lot of really exciting places for your powders to land. So there we go. Just like that. Now, I'm going to put one more there because that looks awkward. Every dragon will be a little bit different, and what you decide to do will just be based on the way your clay is working that day. But just have fun with it. Do whatever you need to do to make it satisfying. Now, I am going to go ahead go away, little bug, and just uh, blend these edges here just to make it look like it's growing organically out of his back. I feel that's good. So overall now we have this done, but what I want to do is I want to get a spot for the um, 
if it's going to be a pendant where the wire or the hole would be for the, the uh, stringing before I get too far along. And there's a couple of places we could put it. We could put it right here down at the base. That's the most stable. And often I will put it right straight through here and then the head hangs down a little bit. Um, you can also come through and put it this way. And whatever you do is I usually take my needle tool and I just roll and twist at the same time. You see what I'm doing? But you're gonna wanna angle down so you don't poke through your feathers. So it should come out in between the two and create a hole. And that way you can then take a toothpick or uh, I prefer something that's made out of metal because it will come out of the clay a little easier. The toothpick will kind of grab and hang in there. So something like this now is I can continue to work on that with that there so that that holds that channel open. If I wait till I put on all the powders and the details, then I'm going to smush some of that stuff on the surface while I try to shove holes in there, which is not my preference. But as I mentioned to you before, I'm probably going to do a wall piece out of mine. So I'm going to just get rid of that. And to cover that area up, I could blend it to make it go away. But I always figure, why fix something when you could just add something instead? And I'm going to do just that. Problem solved. Okay, so now we've got all of these little feathery bits, right? We need to make them look a bit more feathery if we want to. And I do because that's more fun or better. So I'm going to take my tool, and you can use a needle tool. I'm using the edge of my Wow It's Awesome tool. And I'm going to put just some lines down the middle of each of these feathers. Now you can do this to all of them or just some of them. I like to do a combination. So I'm gonna start here with that line down the middle and then I'm gonna run these little diagonal lines all the way on this particular feather and I'll do it for one or two of them but then I'm gonna just sort of minimize it as I go. So it's got the hint of things. Kind of my theory on this is once you start introducing elements of realism, it begs for more realism. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I tend to like idealized things a little bit more. I want it to kind of have the feel of the thing, but not necessarily the thing. So I will put the hint of it so anybody looking at it gets feather instantly, but it's not like every single feather is anatomically correct. If you prefer to finish it all because something not completed is bothersome or problematic to you. And if that's the case, that's totally fine. Everybody's got their choices and their things that they prefer. So there's no right. That's a wonderful thing about art. There's no right or wrong. It's just, do you like it? And if the answer is yes, then it's correct. And then we're going to put a little bit more on this and maybe just another little hint or two here and there. All right. So I'm okay with just that. So now we've got feather business happening. We also maybe want to put just a little bit of detail on the body. I tend to like my dragons a little furry. I don't know why. It's just a thing. So what I'm going to do is take, again, this tool, and you could easily use a toothpick, this tool, a needle tool, anything like that. I'm going to use this because I love the edge. It makes it very soft. And I'm going to start putting a little bit of furry fuzz around his face. So you see what I'm doing is I'm just... La, 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 la. I'm just making little flittery bits with my tool, which is the technical term for these, little flittery bits of fur. And you can put as much or as little as you want. I usually do just a little so that my powders will have some really fun places to land. And I like making my dragons have a little bit of fur and a little bit of um, scales. Why? Just because it's fun, I guess. So here's another tool. This one is also on my site. Um, I don't use this as often, but it does make really great scales. So this is called the Pretty Darn Nifty Tool. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to roll the surface here just to make those little scale-like impressions. And you can do this with just any tool that's got an interestingly curved edge. So see what I've got going on in there? It just gives an appearance of scales. And remember that you're following the grain of the dragon. Uh, and that's going to be very similar. Like if you look at a cat and dog, the way that their fur goes down on their tail and everything, that's a good um, 
little guide to how you want your dragon's stuff to go as well. So I'm lifting up the end of that tail. I didn't press it all the way down, which I probably should have told you that, but um, I kind of left it up so I could come sneak back underneath it for whatever details I was looking for. And I'm just pressing a few more of these. And I'm going to have to kind of calm down because it's going to start being too big for the proportion of the tail. So I'm actually making smaller little notches for the rest of that tail. Okay. So now you want to look everything over, see if there's any other details that you wanted. Now I mentioned to you that this would be the time if we wanted to add a bunch of um, embellishments, like little uh, beads or something, this would be the time to add beads. And there's a number of ways that we can do that, but I wanted to just show you the dragon for now. And I have other tutorials and things that walk you through how to add all kinds of beaded embellishments. All right, so now we're done, but it's boring, right? I mean, it's great, but it's also boring because why? Because there isn't any color, any nuance, any shadows, any goodness. Let's make that happen next. So here's my theory on adding color. Um, you want to just put some in strategic areas to make the color pop. And I am a big fan of browns to make an earthy, realistic feel to things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with brown. And I'm going to start putting this in all the best places. Now this brown is yellow ochre shade, which is 270.3 of your pan pastels. Um, pan pastels are, I highly recommend them. They are marvelous. So what I do is I get a little a bit of this and I use my tile as a palette, it works well. And I make sure that my brush is clean. I like to use a little carpet square to clean my brush. Somebody showed me that once and I have been forever grateful. And I am going to use this now to start adding color. So one of the things we can do is start inside that ear. We know that it's gonna be a little deeper inside the ear. And you notice how I'm using just a little bit and I'm turning my tile around so I can get into the angles that I want. I'm going to put a little bit underneath the ear too because there's some shadowing in there, right? Let's get a tiny bit inside the nostril. Now, if you make any of your powder go outside of an area where you want it, you just take a little piece of sticky tape and you come and you touch and get the tape off the surface so that it doesn't have that problem anymore. So let's get a little teeny bit inside the corner of the mouth. Doo, doo, doodly doo. All right, so far so good. We could add more in the mouth if we want, but I think we're pretty good. Um, I can put blue around the eye or I can put brown around the eye. I feel like I'm gonna add some blue up in the furry area. So I'm gonna take my brown, and this is a trick right here. I'm gonna take a little bit more powder on the tip of my brush and I'm gonna put the brush right down on top of the eyeball. This is why I do it with glass or stone. And I keep pressing and you see what it does? It makes like mascara all around that eyeball. And then I'll clean my brush off and take it off the surface. And look at how cool does that look? Now look what's happening already. We're getting some shadowing. We're getting a touch of sort of the fun realism going on here, which I really think makes the whole piece come alive. So let's get a little bit around this. Again, I'm just making shadows. I'm just visually accentuating the shadowy areas of this piece to bring it out. So around that middle of the hole, maybe even inside that hole a little bit and on the edge of the tail there, okay? So far, so good. We can get a little bit more down on the throat area. Don't go crazy. You don't want it to turn into a big muddy mess. You just want to start putting enough to where it's starting to have some uh, depth to it. Okay, got a little bit of powder over here, which I don't need. So let's take that away. Okay, the back ear. A little bit back here. How about that? A little blending in there. Perfect. All right, now the feathers. Oh, first of all, let me get a little bit back down here. Okay, so the feathers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same idea, and that is to get it into the areas where there's shadow. And that's what I'm going to start with. So see, I've got the tip of my brush going into that area like that and just bringing it around. Now, if you haven't used powders very much, 
it is not going to happen this easily for you unless you're already skilled at using powder just in general because there, there's some practice involved. In order to get good at something, you have to practice, right? So don't worry about it. If you're not good at first, duh, that's how this stuff works. I mean, nobody knows how to ride a bike the very first second they get on. Nobody knows how to walk or eat without making a mess. All these things are learned skills that come over practice and the same with creativity. So don't get mad at yourself. Don't get impatient at yourself. Just enjoy the process, however messy it is, because each time you do something, you'll have an idea of how you want to do it a different way later. All right, so now we could leave it just like this and it would be fine, don't you think? But I've chosen this darker blue to make some contrasting colors to bring this whole thing excitement. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to get a little bit of this blue inside these scales. So I'm going to just touch inside a few of these scales and then I'm going to use my powder to get rid of some of that, all right? I mean my, excuse me, my tape to get rid of some of that. So I've got some little dots inside the scales. In fact, I think I skipped one there. There we go. And Okay, now I'm going to take my tape and go back and kind of get rid of it on the surface and just see if I can keep it down inside those scales. So see how that's kind of emphasizing that little scale look. And we'll do the same here and add a little bit more. This one you definitely want to have a light touch because this one can get really goofy really quickly if you just put too much of that in there. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, what I would like to do now is I want to give that tail a little extra blue just for funsies. So I'm going to put a fairly big chunk of powder on so that I've got all the powder where I want it most concentrated, go clean my brush, and then blend it out. If I need to add more powder, I will, but the idea is just get rid of some of that extra so that the blending can be nice and smooth. And sometimes I'll use my tool to get in if I need to blend it a little bit better. All right, so remember how we talked about maybe putting some blue um, either in the eye or around the head, and I chose not to do it um, in the eye, which that also would have been fun, but I'm gonna just come here and add just a little bit of blue on the top of the head and go into kind of down the neck there. Clean that up so I can blend it really well here. What do you think? Doesn't that look cute? You got a little hairdo? Put a little teeny bit on his ear there. Now again, if I don't like it, Take it right off but so far i think we're looking pretty good okay so now again one thing i will caution you is when you're starting to work with powders you're going to want to cover everything with every color that there ever was and it's going to get crazy and muddy and don't worry about it when i first started doing polymer clay I, I came from a background of doing earthen clays and glazing is a whole different process so when i used polymer and there was all these colors the first things that i made for several months were just the worst because it was every color it was just everything was just a rainbow vomit but then you find your groove and you figure out how it goes you got to do that you got to do that before you get to the next part so it's all good so I'm going to take this now and start putting it on the tips of those wings. Now you notice there's a little bit of powder. Make sure you're in well ventilated and that's going away from you and not into your face. You don't need to breathe that in. And I'm going to push this like this. But this is another good reason for tapping your brush off here because it lets you control the amount of powders you've got on your brush. Um, otherwise, you just put a big old glump on there and then you have to take it all off and that's a little harder. All right, so see how that gave it like a nice little kapow, which is the technical term. And I'm going to do the same on the tips of this here. And what we end up having now is we have like three distinct colors without having to do any clay blending. We've used our base color and then we've added two different colors with our powders. And it ends up looking really a wonderful, and of course you could have way more than two if you wanted, but it looks really wonderful, but it's all done with our powders and that gives us more control. Okay, kids, look what we have. We have a finished dragon. We look it all over in case you have any little bits and pieces. You can kind of tip it around to see if there's anything anywhere that's needed. Obviously you would have something in there if you were going to keep it as a pendant. If you're going to make it into a brooch, you're gonna bake it and I'll talk about that in a minute. And then you'll flip it over and you can add your pin back or your bail on the back. And you can do that with glue or you can do that with liquid clay and embed it in 
and then recover it and bake it again. I'm not going to go through that now because I have other videos and stuff that talk about that. But just know you have a couple of options. But right now, it's ready to go. There's not a thing that you have to do to this unless you want to do something more. So I'm good with this if you are. So now let's talk about baking for a second. Okay, now we're going to talk about baking. Now, if you've never baked polymer clay before and you're a little unsure about it, so here's the thing. Baking polymer clay is simple. There's a few things to follow and then it's perfect. And it's also the most important part about working with polymer clay because if it bakes too cool or for too short of a time, your piece is going to get broken. And if it goes for too hot and too long, it might get scorched or burnt. But luckily, it's very simple to do it just right. So I'm going to tell you the few things you need to know, but if you're still a little unsure, in the description, I have a link to my little video that's all about baking. So all you have to do to bake your little dragon here today is use an oven. Any kind of convection or um, gas or electric oven is just fine, not a microwave. Preheat it with a thermometer inside so you can tell accurately the temperature. Bake it on its tile, because we created it on the tile. You can just stick that right in the oven. Bake it for the amount of time and at the temperature recommended on your clay package. I'm using Primo, so it's going to be 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes to an hour. Then turn off the oven, let it cool down completely, and that's it. Easy, right? Okay, go do that. Happy, happy baking. If you have the metal wire in there, it's, gonna, it's not going to pull right out. Okay, you're probably going to have to grab onto it with pliers and give it a twist and you'll you'll hear it kind of snap, which means it's breaking the grip of holding onto the clay and then you should be able to ease it out after that. Uh, and then you're good to go. Now, I suggest if you've used pan pastel powders, you don't have to put any glaze on it. It's fine. It will last really well. The powders really grab. But over time, it can rub off. And if you're using anything other than pan pastels, those will rub off a lot quicker. Um, I would suggest using Sculpey Satin Glaze. And after it's baked, you can use that to put a little bit of a clear coating. And you can put a few drops of water so it won't be too shiny if you want to keep it matte. Other than that, it's fine. If you're doing a wall piece, you don't need that at all. You can keep it au naturel. All right, so you go bake it, and then you will have a finished dragon. How fun was that? Wasn't that fun? Dragons are one of my absolute favorite things to make. So I hope that you have started on a new dragony chapter of your creative journey. If you like that, I actually happen to have a book. Now it's available as an ebook. I don't carry it as a paper book anymore. They're out of print, so you can find them here and there. But you can go online and get the ebook of dragons, and it's 50 pages of dragony goodness and I will go through what we did today but in more detail and I'll show you all kinds of things about adding and embedding things and doing other stuff. Now this is the very first book that I ever made so some of the stuff we did today like putting the powders on I only cover briefly here because since this book was made ages ago um, I have leveled up on some of my skills so you learned the new and improved version but there's other ideas in here if you like that. So check the descriptions and there will be a link straight over to my site, christyfriesen.com, but over to the books and ebooks where you'll be able to grab an ebook if you wish. Okay, so I mentioned that I have several other tutorials that would help you learn more about embedding beads and stones into your polymer clay and getting a little crazy with making it into a wall piece mosaic using epoxy clay. Check in the descriptions and there will be a link straight over to my tutorial page where I have ever so many, a hundred and more tutorials to tease you along to learning new techniques or playing with new projects. And because you're watching this and because I love you so much, I have a special code for you that gives you a buy one tutorial, get one free, no limit. No time restrictions. Just use the code DRAGON, D-R-A-G-O-N, when you check out, and it will give you buy one, get one free. Okay? Just on the tutorials. Enjoy. Okay, everybody. Happy creating. May your life be full of curiosity and wonder.
and the occasional dragon.